So let me say there's a scenario where you actually got to clock a patient in the hospital. And this patient had a coronary artery disease, that was CAD. So after clocking, you presented your case and everything was fine. Then, you know your consultants, right? They will always ask you for differential diagnosis. So they ask you for what? Differential diagnosis for coronary artery disease. That means they were like, if it is not coronary artery disease, what else could it be? All right? So that's the purpose of this video. So that you guys should see all that disease conditions that can mimic, okay, coronary artery disease. So that when you are clacking a patient, you try to like rule them out, okay? Try to rule them out. So for coronary artery disease, if it is not coronary artery disease, it could be myocardial infarction, all right? First one, myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is basically just the obstruction, all right? Obstructions of any artery of the heart, okay? Mostly be the coronary one. Then we have reflux or esophagitis, which is inflammation of the esophagus. So therefore, abdominal contents are now refluxing back, like going back, okay? So, then we have peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease. Okay, yeah, this is peptic ulcer disease, all right? Peptic ulcer disease. It could be periditis, pericarditis, sorry, which is inflammation of the pericardium. I didn't bring the picture. Inflammation of the pericardium. It could be what? Pulmonary hypertension. Okay. It could be biliary colic. It could be conostenal syndrome. Conostenal. Okay. Is it conostenal? Costostenal syndrome. Sorry. Costostenal. That was a typo. Costostenal, that means what? There's a fracture along the costal margin of the sternum, right? So I think these are the differential diagnosis for coronary artery disease. Like, if it is not coronary artery disease, it will definitely be this other one.